Okay, today I'm going to teach you about the 5E model for learning science. Um, this is based off a journal article in the Life Science Education uh, Journal, and it came out in 2010, so it's a relatively recent article and a relatively new idea for teaching science. And this is especially effective um, in middle school, high school, and um, can even be used in undergraduate uh, setting science classes. Um, so let's delve into kind of how to do this and why it's important. All right, the first thing is, um, well, why would we want to use the 5E model? Uh, science um, can be really confusing for middle school students. And depending on how you present the ideas, if it's all jumbled up, uh, students aren't going to have a good time and they're not really going to enjoy their science classes as much. Um, and the thing about the 5E model and the reason why um, it's really being stressed now is because uh, it really gives science lesson plans and science units a structure. Um, this structure targets uh, engagement, engaging uh, middle schoolers in the actual content, um, and it's kind of built around using science to solve a particular problem rather than just learning uh, random facts. The 5E structure, it matches um, and it's uh, supported by um, evidence and research that matches how people intuitively learn. Um, and it goes by kind of engaging them in a topic, uh, giving them a reason for why it's important, and then um, moving on to exploring that idea uh, further. All right, so the basics for the 5E model for teaching science is first engagement, exploration, explaining that concept, allowing students to elaborate on that concept, and then um, students finally evaluate um, their own understanding of that concept. So I'm gonna go step by step and kind of introduce you uh, and do a brief survey of these five parts of the 5E model. All right, the first one is engaging students. Um, the first thing that you want to do in this type of lesson plan and unit plan is to kind of start with something interesting and appealing to students. Um, this can be in the form of video, sometimes a really interesting picture, um, and it really hooks them from the start of the lesson. It increases engagement, it boosts curiosity and creativity. And kind of the main thing that we want to do here is we want students to be actively involved in the learning process. So we want them to be engaged in the beginning. We want them to compare you know, new ideas with the stuff they know from before. So a lot of this engage is kind of also um, eliciting, you know, eliciting students' prior understandings um, of the knowledge and content. Um, all right, and so uh, what we see over here is on the right-hand side, we got um, a picture and it shows you know, someone throwing flames around. It's kind of something interesting, something students can look at, and we want them to answer, what do you see? And the what do you think question is really interesting. So asking students an interesting question like, how else could you test for a poisonous substance, you know, other than eating it? It's something that, you know, middle school kids are like, you know, just inquisitive children would kind of be interested in about. So you want to hook them from the beginning with that. Uh, the second step is exploration. And so this one is really allowing students to delve deeper into a concept. So going with that same theme from the previous slide, uh, if we want to talk about flame tests and um, you know the chemicals uh, properties that have to do with that, we can do a lab on that. And so we can allow students to you know step by step, you know, undergo a lab um, process and kind of see it for themselves, see how the different chemicals you know come up with those colors. And that really allows students to work hands-on, which is something important for not only hitting a diverse set of learners, um, you know, kinesthetic learning, um, but also for, you know, middle school students that don't just want to hear, um, you know, the lecture, but actually kind of do science, okay? The la next thing is um, explaining. So after students have gone through a lab or even an activity, um, they're primed and they're ready to kind of take in the next scientific concept. So it's important to note that before this point and before that lab, students really haven't gotten a lot of the bulk of the concept and they're starting to get it at this point after they've, you know, elicited their prior knowledge, they've, um, you know, done a lab or explored that idea a little bit hands on. Now we're ready to kind of bring in the material. And so, um, now we can you know, give them new material and they can assimilate their background knowledge. Um, and this is where the new information is presented. And so if you can see on the right, this is where we bring in the text, um, the key words. And um, 
the basic uh, knowledge that students need to kind of fully understand that idea. Um, the next part is elaborating. So uh, after students kind of, they have, you know, heard of the idea, tested out the idea, then read about the idea, now they're ready to elaborate. So we're asking them hard uh, hitting questions, questions that are very high up on blooms, like um, how do you know, why do you know, why should you care? These type of questions, you know, not with those stems exactly, but the type of questions that are being asked usually at this point, um, they're very higher order questions and really forces students to apply what they learn and kind of evaluate and synthesize all the different pieces that they've picked up on from this you know, very natural approach to learning science. Um, and then lastly, uh, we're going to evaluate students. The students are gonna be um, kind of pressed to evaluate what they have just done um, in kind of an, their own understanding. So this could be in the form of assessment, uh, this can be in the form of you know, an exit slip or something like that, but we want to evaluate and we want students to kind of understand and think about, well, what did they really learn in that section? Um, there's also something that's worth mentioning, a 7E model, and in that 7E model, um, we have an additional step at the end, which is like taking it further, um, and you can see that on the right as well, uh, additional question for students to answer. But the main idea here is these are all um, steps taken uh, that are very important uh, for middle school students. It's very accommodating to their particular, um, you know, the way, the, the way that they kind of learn best. Um, and so just thinking of that social emotional um, you know, place that they're in, uh, this 5E model can be very helpful for teachers who are trying to, you know, accommodate for that uh, age group. Um, all right, and that's um, your guide to using the 5E model of teaching science.